Great. So let's look a little bit. Now we talked about all the different architectures and it was very fast. Let's talk a little about what the effect is. On, uh, and this, gra uh, this graph is really nice at highlighting this. So what do we have here? On this axis, uh, we have the runtime basically that we need for training something. And on this axis, we have the top one accuracy. And then as the size of these dots, we find, uh, we find how many parameters there. And look at that, relative to a lot of models that came afterwards, AlexNet actually has a very large number of parameters. And VGG even has more parameters. And um, they have a lot of parameters and uh, they are eclipsed by later, no uh, later models. So what do we have here for the later models? Now, like, it almost looks like there's a certain frontier here, where, well, at least within this range, having more, uh, uh, more uh, runtime allows you to be better here. And what we see is that there's a, a, a little bit of a trade-off. Now, look at look a little at these outlays here. This mobile net, these very small number of parameters actually very good uh, performance and if you have some time I highly recommend looking at these but this gives you a little bit the flavor of uh, of uh, of the trade-offs that are here now, and of course by now we are constructing even much bigger models than they had back then but in a way these models with top one accuracy around 80 75 80 percent provides incredibly good performance on uh, on the uh, on the ImageNet data set. It, uh, you, we can consider it solved in a way now. Okay, let's talk a little about other applications of ConvNets. The first one is, of course, we can use ConvNets for image recognition. And there's, of course, by now a lot of different products that do such things and recognize objects. We can use ConvNets for style transfer. Let's talk a little about a style transfer. Now you can say, here we have an image. We would like to be able to render that image in different, uh, in different uh, modern art styles. Now, what do we have? We can say that content, what is there is measured in a way by the deeper layers in the neural network. Whereas what about style? We can say the style of an image is measured by the local correlations between feature vectors at lower levels. For example, what does that mean? Now, like if we have a style like that, it means that nearby points tend to have similar, uh, similar color. It, ten it also has, if there's a stripe here, the stripe will tend to continue. And we have that here. We have that in this style. It's very different with respect to the distribution. But all of uh, but we can still say style of good approximation is something that's a local property. And then how we solve that deep learning style? Well, we define a compound objective that contains one. We want that the high levels are similar. The, so we want to minimize the content difference between the new image and the content template at the high levels. And we want to minimize the style difference between the new image and the style template at the low levels. And then putting that together allows us to do style transfer here. We can use it for image segmentation using something that's called UNETs, where we take an image, we basically uh, uh, basically uh, uh, go and do the convolutions as we go down, but we then also go back to high dimensional data uh, using up convolutions. And uh, what we do, but we have this side channel, you know, like where we basically allow the input image to also be used. Such architectures are very good when it comes to, say, segmenting biological cell membranes. So what do we have here? We have up convolution, and uh, and it's uh, an example of how to make uh, fully convolutional networks, which go from pixels to pixels. Up convolution, what is that? In a way, it just means up sampling. Now the image, we go from a, a lower dimensional space, maybe one where we'd normally get two by using a max pool, and we then upsample it and then apply a convolution. It allows the, uh, for the refinement of upsampled by land weights, and it goes along with, uh, with decreasing the number of feature channels. And it produces the kind of connections that we have 
in the U in this architecture. Now, confidence are being used for face recognition. So I give you a database of K persons. Um, you get an image, uh, an input image, and uh, your goal is to identify the image of any other of the K people. Uh, or say that it's not in there. Now, like, I want to know, have I seen this person before? And if so, what are the other images where they're in? So, uh, in that case, we would want to have one-shot learning. Now, like, I, I cannot give you thousand images of Conrad. What I want to do is I want you to learn about images and then be able to take one photo from Conrad and generalize. You want to, to recognize a person given just one example. And we call that one-shot learning. So if you train a network, no, like one way of doing that is give, take that one image and train on it. But of course that wouldn't produce good generalization because you just have one training example and one output. Um, and if a new person uh, joins, you would immediately have to retrain your whole confident. How can we solve this kind of problem? Well, the idea here is that we instead of learning to recognize, we want to learn a similarity function and then we can solve that one-shot learning basically outside of the confinet. And uh, what I want is a similarity metric that tells me how similar is this photo from this photo when we can say if, the, if Conrad is visible on both of them, I want it to be similar. And if Conrad's visible on one of them and Lila's visible on the other one, we want that they are very different to one another. And um, we can then say, well, if that new image is sufficiently close to another uh, image of Conrad in some embedding space, we will call, label that image with Conrad. And what we usually do is we use networks called Siamese networks to solve that problem. So what's the idea there? Uh, we have a network that takes one photo, it goes to the ConfNet, produces a function, a vector at the end. We have another image, goes to the same neural network, produces a vector at the, uh, the end. And then we can define a distance between the two images, and that distance is basically the distance of the outputs of the network and the two norm between those two vectors. And now, what's the goal here? We want to go through that. Uh, we have the parameters of the network that basically define how that output depends on the image. And we want to learn the parameters so that if uh, the two photos are of the same person, the distance should be small. And if the two photos are of different people, the distance should be large. And we often use uh, these triplet functions for it, where we take an anchor one image, another image of the same person, and an image of, the, of a different person. These confnets will all be the same. They're the same mapping of image to embedding. And then we have the triplet loss, which is basically the, uh, basically we want the similarity to be high between the, uh, between uh, the, 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 between these two. So we want them to be similar. So uh, therefore we have that positively in here. We want these two to be, to be dissimilar to one another. And then we want to have a certain maximal gain that you could get here, just so that the network can't specialize on basically just taking a small number of, uh, of anchor uh, positive samples and weighing them very strongly. And that's why this basically cuts, uh, cuts off at a certain maximal value that you can have here. And now, why don't you try and understand that approach using the facial recognition exercise?